Hey everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. And today is something of a breaking news-ish kind of thing. It's something I wanted to jump on really quick and just get the general sense and feel of it so that I could talk about it and maybe just get your thoughts and get some opinion from folks who are watching this video and maybe have some experience with Webflow. There's a lot of stuff out there. I am not an expert on everything by any stretch of the imagination. Now, I used to use Webflow. The funny thing is, is when I reactivated this account, uh, it had a, a project that I had in there from back in 2013 from when I was designing the very first uh, WordPress themes that I had had worked on. Uh, and, and I believe at the time Webflow was maybe just like a, uh, a way to uh, create uh, mock-ups, if you will. I can't even really remember why I first started using Webflow that far back, but now it's like this full-fledged, uh, you know, competitor, if you will, to WordPress, and it's a self-contained uh, editor CMS engine, but I know you can hook it up to many different uh, sources of content and databases, and today they released their Webflow plugin. So I wanted to show you that and just talk about it really quick. It's super easy. You install the plugin, you activate it, you head on over uh, to uh, the settings page. When you first initially activate it, it's going to ask you to drop in uh, your API key, which you get from your individual project uh, in a Webflow setting. So if I went, or Webflow control panel. So if I went over to my project, I went over to integrations. Um, I could come down and grab this new API key uh, or copy my API key right from here and dump it right into. Uh, my WordPress website. It's pretty painless. They show you how to do that right in this welcome message. If you just follow this guide, it does work exactly uh, as they say. And this video is going to be short. Uh, I'm just going to show you real quick. Once you set up a location um, to match up to one of your pages in Webflow, you will be able to serve Webflow pages as if it were coming from your WordPress website. So you can see right here, I have slash landing page, and that's going to pull up this homepage template uh, or design that I have inside of my Webflow site. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to open up the designer. And you'll see, you know, this is uh, the page uh, that it's going to load. In fact, I'm going to bounce out of the designer. I don't want that. I want to go to the editor. The designer is something much more of, um, you know, where you're designing the templates, the layout, the control of everything. And this editor here is where you would give access to somebody who doesn't need to see all like, you know, the, the Photoshop view or the code view. They just need to come in here and edit the content. And I guess that's what makes Webflow so darn powerful. But let's just pull this up. So it's slash landing page. Uh, actually I actually already have it right here. So you can see right here, stayshoe.slogan.me slash landing page. This is actually my WordPress website. So if I just write, go right back uh, to the homepage, uh, this is a broken theme because I disabled the uh, the starter sites in, in Elementor and Astra. But you can see this is right here in my uh, WordPress site. If I go to slash landing page, it's going to pull that uh, site in right from Webflow. I am using the free version. You can use the free version too. It's going to pull in that little Webflow watermark to let people know that this is uh, being used on Webflow. Now, some of the cool things that I can see happening here is, you know, using Webflow as a landing page designer for your marketing team. So while the rest of the site might be powered with, uh, with Webflow, or excuse me, with WordPress, Webflow acts as this landing page editor so that you can give your creatives, your marketing team access to something that isn't the, the core components of WordPress. So if you had a WordPress site that was an e-commerce site or it had a lot of custom fields for designing a home page, let's say, but your marketing team was like, we need to build landing pages faster, I can see that's where Webflow slots in to a lot of their existing customer base. Maybe not for you and I because we're all experienced WordPress users. We use things like Elementor and Beaver Builder and Gutenberg and we're just saying, hey, give permissions only to this set of custom post types or to these pages and use those um, you know, native page building tools in that context. Whereas, you know, you might be a shop uh, or an organization that's already using Webflow, but man, you really wish you had the publishing powers of WordPress um, and just all of the plugins available to WordPress, but you want the design aspect of Webflow. That's where I really see this, you know, coming into play. So if I just, okay, this is the staging site slash landing page. This is Webflow. It's hard to tell because it looks exactly the same as you can see down here at this, this bottom bar. Um, 
it takes a minute for things to, to propagate real quick. So I'm going to do, uh, this is a, this is a new headline powered by Webflow, three exclamation points. And uh, I'm going to publish that. I'm going to publish that one change. So this is the way it looks for like, you know, the creative, the design, or I should say the marketing person, the person you don't want playing with all of the stuff. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. And if I go to open the designer, this is where we get into, again, that Photoshop feel where I can actually start to design uh, the real hardcore elements of, of a template. So I'm going to just change this to blue and let's just see uh, how fast it takes for this to all update. So I'm going to publish that. And, and again, this is not a web flow tutorial. You can spend some time in here. You can get into the different pages. You can clone this. You can copy this. You can organize it. But let me go back to the landing page and refresh this. Let's see if the, yep, the caching did catch up. So sometimes I found it to be a little bit slower, but this seemed to catch up pretty quick. And again, that was pretty easy. I didn't have to load up a, you know, a code editor. I didn't have to deploy this stuff. And you know, these are the advantages, I think, that Webflow has to your traditional sort of WordPress uh, design development workflow. And I can see this slotting in uh, pretty well for those organizations that do want to use Webflow. And I know there's a lot of them out there because I, I see a lot of people, um, you know, talking about uh, Webflow. And in fact, if I go to twitter.com slash Webflow and pull up their tagline here, they are on a mission to democratize the creation of the web, which sounds oddly familiar to what WordPress wants to do uh, and what Matt and Automatic have really devoted a lot of their uh, dollars and hours towards. So, so let me know what you think. It's super easy. Once you install the plugin, you get Webflow activated uh, with your API key. You design a page on Webflow and then you tell it which page to load for. It's, it's pretty darn powerful. Um, and I'm interested to see how this all plays out. Is it just another tool in the old WordPress tool bag across, you know, all of the other native builders like Elementor, Beaver Builder, so on and so forth. Uh, and Beaver and uh, uh, Gutenberg, which I just did uh, six tips video on in the last video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. It's plugintod.com, plugintod.com slash subscribe to join that mailing list. Like this video if you want more videos. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. Share it with friends and family. See you in the next video.